find it a bit weird that they've already made a statue of me here in Shrewsbury. I first gave this talk, the difference between artist code and engineering code, at the University of Bournemouth last year, and I was presenting to a bunch of students who were probably more from an engineering background. And I've been thinking about tackling the subject for a while, and that seemed to be a good place to try it out. And typically, in that environment, you would lead up to the conclusion at the end, because it's a captive audience. But I think here, I'm going to say it right at the start, that the short of this is that when you're an artist coming to code to create generative art, it's absolutely fine if your code is messy and all over the place. That's the one message coming from here it doesn't have to be perfect it's okay to be sloppy and messy art way of doing things anyway it's pretty chilly out here although beautiful so let's get back to the studio and we'll go through the presentation Hi, I'm Dan Cat. I'm an artist, or at least I trained as one. My degree is an arts degree, although I spent most of that using a computer. And then I did do the whole software engineering thing in Silicon Valley for, for escaping all of that and then setting up here in my studio. When looking at generative art and creative coding, my observation is that it's harder for somebody with just a technical software background to suddenly become an artist. Sure, they can reverse engineer what's popular in generative art at the moment and then apply all their coding knowledge to making that, but I think it can take a while for them to find their own creative feet coming from that direction. Meanwhile, an artist can come along and then see code that they've never used before and then think of it as just another artistic material and fairly quickly quickly start throwing something together that generates art. Many people will disagree with that previous statement, which is fine. I'm using broad brushstrokes here. A thing that does work against artists though when learning code is often the documentation is very proper and it's correct and it's geared towards an engineering approach to coding, which is different to an artist's approach. Let me explain that a little bit with a made up example and then something from my own past or journey, although that does sound a bit weird. Anyway, imagine you're working at the widget factory and they think they should maybe start using technology and because you've used Google Sheets once and they saw you doing it, you're now the technical person. They want you to track the widgets that they make and their widgets have four features. In code, you could do this. Feature one, feature two, feature three, and feature four. Now. This will work and this will absolutely do what you need it to do. And there's nothing wrong with this for the purpose you've been asked to do it for. However, even as I'm saying that, the engineering side of my brain is twitching. So this might be a better way of doing things. Feature X. So when they finally inevitably introduce the fifth feature, you're ready for it. Hell, you're ready for 200 features. And this is generally what the documentation will tell you to do because it makes sense and it's been written for me years of experience of this stuff happening. Nowhere will the documentation say, sure, go right ahead and use feature one, feature two, and so on, even though it works just fine for what you want. Now, the personal example. When I was doing my degree, 26 years ago, I used a programming language called Visual Basic. It was all like windows and buttons and drop downs and it connected to databases and it was all very, again, proper. When I was growing up as a kid, I was using the basic programming language like BBC microcomputers. So it was second nature to use that language at this point. Meanwhile, all the other artists on the course who had never touched a computer before were using this thing called Macromedia Flash that did colors and shapes and sound and animation and that type of arty thing. And it did it on a timeline that looked something like, well, this. I was indignantly horrified. I tried to find a photo, but this is the closest that I got. The thing is though, over just a few days, they would make something, stick it on a web page, and then loads of people could visit the web page and then see that thing. It's how you ended up with stuff like Viking kittens. And now I feel old because that reference probably means absolutely nothing to you. Meanwhile, in Visual Basic World, I had to compile the program and then make an executable and an installer to go with it, ask people to go visit a web page to download the program, run the executable, all of that just to see my art, because I was doing things properly the engineering way. Meanwhile, my peers would have already moved on to the next thing, like happily oblivious to their suboptimal way of working. Ugh. So one of the differences between engineering code, 
an R code. On the left here is a program in the middle of all the arrows, and it has data coming in from databases and user input, and it's displaying stuff, and it's writing to files and so on. It's continuously running, and it has to stay running, handling all sorts of events happening to it and around it, and not crash if one of those other things goes wrong, unless your Twitter. <laughs> That's going to age really badly. Meanwhile, on the right is a generative R script that takes one input at the top, does a bunch of calculations, and it sets up the canvas to draw on. It makes some nicely named features to help people understand the output a little bit more, and then it spits out some art. That's all it has to do. It may have to leave behind a program that's running that animates over time, but generally the end result is just the static image. What the code looks like, how well the code is written, does not matter. Often the code will look like a choose your own adventure book. You start with an if statement that takes everything one way, but sometimes it'll all go the other way. And then you'll have another if statement and then another one until it's if statements all the way down. Then you pop a loop in here so it does something a few thousand times. And then the best part where you start to copy and paste your code over and over and over and over and over again in blocks because you want to do the same thing in several slightly different ways. And it doesn't matter as long as it spits out art at the end. And, and how do you know if there's a bug? Well, you just leave it running for hours, spitting out all the output, saving thousands of results until it can do that without crashing or without sending out blank inputs. And once it's done, it's just in the past. It doesn't matter. You finished it, you're on to the next thing. Nearly everybody, artist or engineer, after coding a project goes, well, if I could do that all over again, I would do several things differently. In engineering, on the program constantly running side, that's called technical debt, that you, or most likely somebody else, now has to go back and fix. As an artist, you get to move on to the next thing with new information and new skills and the best of intentions, and then you copy and paste some code over from your past project and then tweak them in the new project. The whole point of this is that it's okay. It's okay to be messy, it's okay to have if statements going 20 deep, it's okay and to copy and paste a bunch of code, it's okay not to make libraries out of all of your work or make common functions or objects that can be reused and stuff like that. You can do that and that's great, but the art is the important thing. If it makes the art, then it doesn't matter how you got there. Sure, maybe you'll learn how to make things run faster, which is good, because if you can make things run faster, then you can get it to do more stuff in the same length of time, but you can kind of learn that along the way. So, going right back to the very start. Documentation can be quite tricky to understand sometimes, and it's not you, it's because it's been written to be correct, but you don't need to do correct. I mean, Documentation would be terrible if it just went, yeah, do whatever you want, but that doesn't stop the fact that it sometimes makes it trickier for artists who are just trying to get something done, especially when there's no examples. It's just, you can use these methods and pass in these options, which is great, but you know, not that great for an artist. So what is good? Finding examples, looking at other people's code, asking other artists if you can, brute forcing it until it does what you want, or the long ass answers that come from chat GPT if they actually work. I hear coding train is supposed to be quite good. It isn't always about generative art and it's not focused on it, but there's uh, quite a lot there anyway. That's my opinion on engineering versus art coding. Engineering or turned into functions, libraries, error checking. It's robust, extendable, maintainable, and so on. Art coding, if statements and loops all the way down. Just keep making art, that's the main thing. Further down the road, and maybe the engineering stuff starts to make more sense, maybe it doesn't, doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is the art, and I will fight you in the comments about that. I mean, I won't, but if you disagree, you can make your own video about it or... Just...